Are you suffering from pain, stiffness, tightness with difficulty overhead and reaching activities on your shoulder due to inflammation, tightness, stiffness, as well as popping and clicking with pain? Hi, my name is Annie and welcome to my channel, Annie Pilates Physical Therapist. In this video, I'll be discussing about shoulder impingement syndrome. And if you have this syndrome and you want to recover from this to prevent it from having a frozen shoulder, then I'll be discussing the anatomy, physiology, why you're having this, and how to mitigate this problem utilizing elastic band, dumbbell, pilates, yoga, and physical therapy treatment plans. If you don't have dumbbell or elastic band, you can also still join me for Absolute Beginners. So get your mat ready and join me. If you are new to my channel, my recommendation is you to go back to my previous three videos I made about shoulder impingement syndrome that you can slowly add and progress slowly and effectively. And you want to learn more about Pilates, yoga, physical therapy, health and wellness, please subscribe to my channel so you won't miss anything about health and wellness. Let me discuss about shoulder impingement so you can learn more about this so you can prevent it from getting worse and you can always learn about mind-body awareness, the importance of posture awareness, and how to strengthen those intricate muscles that support our shoulder, the most shallow joint that relies a lot on the muscle strength. So what is shoulder impingement syndrome? It is a result of a vicious cycle of rubbing of the rotator cuff muscles between your humerus, which is the bone on your arm, and top of the outer edge of your shoulder, the acromion process. The rubbing leads to more swelling and further narrowing of the space, which result in pain and irritation, and sometimes creates this bursitis, the bursa that holds them together. Treatments include rest, anti-inflammatory medications, physical therapy, and cortisone injections. So please see your doctor and local physical therapist first to make sure you have the syndrome before proceeding with my program. Bone spur tightens the space around the rotator cuff, leading to rubbing against the acromion. One cause of shoulder impingement syndrome is bone spurs, so you might have it or you might not have it. Bone spurs tighten the space around your rotator cuff, causing it to rub against the acromion. So with repetition of motions, if your job requires you overhead, if you play sports, then it starts causing some bone spurs because of the repetition and movement patterns the same planes. Shoulder impingement occurs when the top outer edge of your shoulder blade called the acromion, as I said earlier, rubs against or impinges and pinches your rotator cuff beneath it, causing pain, inflammation, and that's what's called tendinitis that you can see in your diagnosis or tendinopathy. So what is your rotator cuff does? And it does a lot of things for your movement of your shoulder. So what is the rotator cuff muscles? It's a group of four muscles that originates on the shoulder blades and attaches to the cuff or tendon on your arm bone or humerus. So one is the supraspinatus on top of the blade, infraspinatus, the subscapularis underneath the armpit behind the blade, and the teres minor on the lateral side. So you use your rotator cuff to help raise your arm overhead to rotate your arms towards and away your body. So in and out, you will notice in this illustration that the rotator cuff sits in a small space between two bones, the shoulder, the acromion, and the humerus. This arrangement makes the rotator cuff susceptible to being pinched or impinged between these bones, leading to what we call the impingement syndrome. So as I said, the rotator cuff is a group of muscle that sits in a small space between the crumb and the humerus. So it's so important to keep that space a little bit more open and be able to glide through. It's like a sliding door that gets stopped when there's something in between. So rotator cuff is very important muscles, as I said, and it's hard to activate them if we don't use them every day for strengthening program, unlike our biceps and triceps. So how does this develop. So with the poor posture, you're already narrowing the area that I said. So it gets irritated and injured more. And as I said, the swelling on the shoulder is example, if you sprain your ankle and you have swelling, it causes pain. The same thing on your shoulder, 
and their swelling causes other things to create more problem. Swelling reduces the amount of space, rotator cuff muscles leading to rubbing against the acromion. Like a vicious cycle, the rubbing of the rotator cuff tendons result in swelling which further narrows the space between the acromion. In some cases, bone spurs, as I said, creates more problem because of the repetition of your lifestyle. And it's also the same way with other joints of our body with if you overstress, overuse lifestyle. So who gets this shoulder impingement syndrome? Almost everyone gets it. It's almost common to the dominant side because you use it a lot, but I've seen also with non-dominant side and those who involve your sports, overhead rotational movement like swimming, baseball, volleyball, tennis, and things such as window washing, painting, or even chefs who does a lot of repetition of cooking and housekeepers. Shoulder impingement can also result from an injury such as a fall on the shoulder in an outstretched arm or directly onto the shoulder. So how common is shoulder impingement syndrome? It's thought to be cause of 44 to 65 percent of all shoulder pain complaints. So it always starts from there from having impingement. If you don't fix this then it starts causing frozen shoulder and then if you don't fix that as well, then it causes a tear and fraying on the tendon and then you ended up no movement on your shoulder and you need surgery in order to make it move because the shoulder, those muscles, activates abduction the first five degrees of your shoulder motion. So your rotator cuff tendon passes through that small space and any the tiny bit tip of the outer edge of shoulder blade, the scapula, that comes off at the back of this bone. So with this motion of 180 degrees, 120 starts on your shoulder. Once you pass 90, then the scapula helps move. We call it the scapula humeral rhythm. So that's so important to loosen up the upper back tightness. As I said, with forward rounded shoulder posture, see if I try moving forward, it gets impinged if I pretend to have that bad posture. So it's important to open that up so your bursa in that area where it glides through have more space and the inflammation will decrease and then you will heal slowly. And the acromion is not flat. You were born this way. You have developed age-related bone spurs on your acromion so it starts becoming flat that looks like a sharp edge knife now that causes the rubbing and fraying now on the tendon through the years as we keep using it and it starts changing the shape of that acromion area that looks like a sharp blade. So what are the symptoms? You will feel pain when you extend above your head, pain when you're lifting anything heavier than five pounds, lowering your arm from a raised position. When reaching, you're gonna have pain and pain and tenderness in the front of your shoulder, which is the insertion of all those four muscles that comes together into bundled into one. Pain when you lie down on your shoulder, pain and achiness at night, which affects your ability to sleep, pain when you're reaching behind your back, so you're gonna be difficult to place your bra or rub your neck or your back, your zipper at your back pocket, anything that you reach behind you, shoulder and arm weakness with stiffness, and then as it keeps going on gradually over weeks to months, it could cause a tear. Shoulder impingement is closely related to other common causes of pain in the shoulder called bursitis and rotator cuff tendinitis. So these conditions can occur alone or combination of all of these. So shoulder pain can also be a sign of a more serious injury to your rotator cuff, a tear, a small tear or a larger tear. So having an MRI will find out how big is your tear. It's with special tests, you can see some weakness, but with an MRI, you can really significantly see what's going on in detail. So in addition, you may rupture or tear your biceps muscle tendon as well as part of the continuing impingement process because the long head of the biceps, because biceps means two muscles, one originates near the shoulder and one in the humerus and the one, the long head of the biceps is the one that gets torn as well because of the tightness and less space for the movement. So as I said earlier, please see your medical doctor, have a medical history, a physical examination to check for pain and tenderness if you already have this diagnosis and to make sure you don't have a tear. Having an MRI diagnostic will help you 
resolve this problem more. And as I said, if you see a shoulder specialist doctor, they could do cortisone injections as well to help decrease the inflammation so you can start moving your shoulder and start rehabilitation faster and quicker. But not everyone has the same reaction with injection, with cortisone injection. So you can always start with more conservative treatments such as physical therapy. So let's start now. Let's begin utilizing some elastic band to warm up our shoulders. So the elastic band is a closed kinematic chain movement and usually I usually give this to my patient to warm up their shoulders even without movement. With your elbow close to your hips, bend to 90 degrees. You can place roll towels on your armpit to squeeze it tight to isometrics and you can slowly pull the band gently. You don't have to pull it far, slow and easy. And you're gonna feel that opening of your shoulder and slowly pull back and then relax. So as you open, you hold it for five, four, three, two, one, and back. If you find this too difficult and too weak for you, you can always start even without the elastic band, slowly open and then back. Do that 10 times. After warming up your shoulder in a seated position, then you can slowly do a roll back with your shoulder. So lift over your ear and then roll back. You take a deep breath, lift and then back. Inhale and exhale. Feels good on your shoulder. So when you lift, you pull back, you're warming up these upper structures of your shoulder. And after 10 times of rolling back, you can place your hands on your shoulder if you can reach. If you can reach it, you can just place it near your shoulder and roll back further back, squeeze and up. As a gentle progression, you're gonna lift your elbows back now and down. Up and down, you might hear some clicks and pops. As long as there's no increasing pain, that's fine. And do that 10 times as well. And now place your hands on your side, elbow straight. So there's a connection with some tension on your upper traps all the way to your neck. So with your palms, fingers open, slowly tilt your head on one side. You might feel some tension radiating towards your neck. And hold that in five seconds, hold. And now to the other side, slow and steady. It's nice to warm up your neck and shoulder. I also recommend putting some heat on your shoulder before you start the treatment. Be slow and steady as you lean on one side. You don't want to yank your neck, you want to be gentle. Be careful because it's going to be stiff and difficult to move. And after side to side, Now we could go to your hands and knees position. So hands and knees position activates your scapular humeral muscles. So this area on your upper back that gets really stiff and tight. Hands level to your shoulders, knees level to your hips. Fingers open for support and slowly press down, keeping your elbow straight and you're gonna feel that click on your shoulder and then push up. So you're mobilizing your shoulder muscles. Protraction, it's like you're protracting up and down using your own body weight. And if this is too difficult, I have another video you can try that you're lying on your back with a stick and dumbbell. And I'll show you later after this. And after mobilizing up and down, Slowly, With, if you have good knees, you can do a gentle child pose to stretch your shoulder, slide it as much as you can. You might look like a little bit rounded, so try to keep your upper back straight and then lower your forehead down to the mat and hold that in three deep breaths. Last deep breath in. And then exhale back to your hands and knees position. Well done. Now let's lie on your back. So lying on your back is a little bit easier 
on your shoulder and we're gonna use the elastic band again with your knees bent starting on your hip position so if your problem side is your left you're gonna cross your arm towards your right hip and then lift diagonally to the side so it's a diagonal it's like opening pulling a sword knife on your right side and opening up and reach and down and reach diagonal we're doing a pnf patterns up and you might feel pain past 90 slow and steady to strengthen and then lengthen after doing that 10 times it's great to do the opposite side as well even the good side so you can feel the difference one side is easier than the other and that will help the other side the bad side to learn from the good side well done now we're going to continue with your elbows again close to your waist and like what we did earlier in seated position you're going to separate your arms apart and you're going to feel that on your shoulder slowly open be gentle to your shoulder because we already did the child pose so your shoulder blades and your shoulder joint feels a little bit warmer and more range of motion now you might feel tired now as you pull the band apart keeping that elbows near your waist try not to lift it out like that keeping your elbows tight squeezing it together towards your hips last one and now let go of the band we're gonna use the dumbbells now okay the next one we're gonna use dumbbell and with the dumbbells press up first and if you don't have a dumbbell you can use bottled water and slowly lift overhead and then back down slow and steady if you can't go all the way up overhead that's fine slowly build up the flexibility of your shoulder be gentle slow and steady overhead and then down you might feel some pain on top of your shoulder as long as it's not increasing pain just a gentle stretch as you breathe in breathe out inhale as you lift exhale as you go down two more to go and my recommendation is do this 10 times last one inhale lift and now from this position we are going to do some reach so this is the protraction i was telling you earlier on your hands and knees slowly reach forward keeping your elbow straight and then relax reach and then relax squeezing your core in breathe in breathe out and do that 10 times as well small range of motion you won't see a lot of movement but it helps release that area where there's inflammation and slowly go down well done now we're gonna lie on your side so if your problem is your right side you lie on your left elbows bent starting on your stomach area and then you lift up opening your shoulder to external rotation side lying and i did this in my previous video before so i'm adding it today as you breathe in and breathe out and do that 10 times as well you're gonna feel it around your shoulder the muscles getting tired you might feel fatigue like a burning pain yes. and then you can also let go of the dumbbell if you can't further lift because of pain and weakness slowly build it up even without the tumble or bottle water and now with your elbow extended this is the next exercise we'll do abduction so with your thumb out pointing up with your dumbbell slowly lift it up and then overhead 
as much as you can and then down lift to strengthen the muscles we're going to slowly progress more as we go to our stomach position to mobilize your shoulder and then do this 10 times as well everything is 10 repetitions then slowly progress to two sets of 10 until you can do three sets of 10 you can slowly add the sets every few weeks depends on how you feel on your shoulder and how much you can move with your strength of the muscles surrounding it okay my friends on your stomach so let's mobilize our shoulder with some lovely mobility drill so there's some shoulder mobility drill that you can do if you can't do this yet you can always skip this part this is a very difficult so as you reach over your head with both hands so you're reaching on the back of your neck and then this is one motion scoop it like swimming and as you go past your shoulder level you're gonna slowly thumbs up inward to internal rotate slowly reach back behind you reaching over your upper back you might feel some clicking as long as there's no pain so at my hands now is palms up behind me and then slowly go back again on your side thumbs up reach forward and as fast behind your head slowly reach behind your neck pulling your elbows up and then slowly glide forward again we're swimming again thumbs down twist internal rotation slowly reach back it's like a cup place some handcuffs behind you so you're gonna feel that on your shoulder blade and the front of your shoulder slowly reach back to your side thumbs down and then palms down place behind you it's a lot on your core your upper back strength and your posture slowly thumbs down and pull in and then now my palms is up and then reaching behind me crossing bending my elbows placing on my shoulder lower part of my shoulder and you can feel the stretch in front of my shoulder keeping my elbows back stretching those tight muscles so i'm mobilizing that bursa space i was talking about earlier and then as you go past 90 slowly palms down thumbs up overhead and once it goes overhead place it behind your neck to open the external rotate this is a lot on your core and upper back muscles again reach forward again and then palms up as you turn internal rotate and then slowly go behind you and reach and bend your elbows closer to your spine as much as you can elbows up take a deep breath and extend Oops, up overhead reach and up and then back last set behind your back and reach and lift your elbows and your shoulder up and down Whew. that was a beautiful mobilization of your shoulder you might hear some clicking popping and it feels so good to mobilize that tight area now with the dumbbell this is one of the great exercises for my patients with poor posture with your dumbbells to your side in the v position so we're gonna do a lovely caption on your stomach like a letter y so my legs is like the lower part of the y and my arms are the, the limbs of the letter y and lift and down up and down if you find this too difficult the dumbbell you can do this even without inhale and exhale squeeze your core in two more and my recommendation is do this 10 times as well after letter y you do letter t so with letter t is also very difficult and lift it really targets your thoracic spine muscles as well as you inhale lift and down two more thumbs up about doing this last one and do that 10 times as well 
after letter T, we'll do extension or letter I, and my thumbs down and lift backward to target your shoulder extensors, your posterior deltoid. As you breathe in, lift and down, inhale, exhale, two more, last one, and down. And do that 10 times as well. We are cooling down now. We are lying on your back. With your elbows bent, elbow level to your shoulder, palms up. We're gonna do some, we're gonna cool down lovely with your knees bent. We're gonna mobilize it gently as you try to go down to internal rotation as much as you can. Try not to lift your shoulders like that, keep it to the mat. If you find it going down and you're lifting your shoulder, I'd rather have it stop in this position and slowly build up the range of motion. So open and then stop when it starts lifting your shoulders. So for me, I could go all the way down without any problem, but most of my shoulder impingement patients, they get stuck somewhere here and that's fine. And slowly build it up all the way down if you can without lifting your shoulder. Keep that shoulder on the mat and then open and you might find it difficult to open. Slowly mobilize it up to 10 times as you get more flexible on your shoulder as you slowly lengthen the tight shoulder muscles and capsule. Up and down as you breathe in, breathe out. Two more to go. Last one. And after doing that, we're gonna do open door exercise or so open book exercise. So on your side, with your knees bent, hands together, slowly open like a book and turn to open your chest muscles. And you turn your neck towards your following your hand motion and hold that for 10 seconds, hold up to 30 seconds, hold and then back. So if your problem side is your shoulder, right side, so lean on your left and open your right. Take a deep breath and then exhale back. Again, open and trunk rotation on your thoracic spine and shoulder blades will be slowly lengthened on your chest all the way to the front of your shoulder. Feels so good. Inhale and exhale. After doing that 10 times, you can use a wall to open the tight shoulder. So with this ball, I'm pretending it's my left side this time. With my palms touching everything on the wall and my wrist is pressed as well if you can so you can see it here and I'm gently turning my head away and you can feel that stretch on my shoulder on the front and I'm slowly turning my body and then relax so take a deep breath open you're opening that bursa that's been tight you might feel some tingle sensation all the way down to your wrists because sometimes it gets tight on your nerves you might get some thoracic outlet syndrome that you didn't even know you have so this will help open and make your shoulder feel so much better as you breathe in and breathe out then you're gonna lean on the wall for another lovely stretch we can do so we're gonna do some wall angels as i said with your elbow squeeze on your side you're using the wall to slowly glide up, elbows bent and slowly go up as much as you can and glide in through and then down. This is a great way for mind-body awareness, for your posture awareness to open your tight shoulder. You can slowly engage your core muscles. I'm really squeezing my shoulder blades. As I squeeze my shoulder blades back and I'm slowly reaching up inhale and then exhale down to go and my recommendation is to do this 10 times as well last one and down and you can do the open book as well in this position so you can start on your left reaching on your right 
open and then switch to the other side. This will help stretch your upper back, mind body awareness and do that 10 times as well. And now with your elbows pressed on the wall and your palms as well, slowly internal rotation and then external slow and steady. Do that 10 times as well. With the elastic band, you can use the wall as well. I'm going to place it resisting on my hand. So you're going to tie it into a loop. So when you tie this on the loop, you're going to use it. Just wrap around on your hand, on your pinky and thumb like this position. And you're going to use the wall for control of movement. So pretending this is a wall, not a window. Facing behind you, I'm slowly separating the band apart, resisting to your shoulder. And slowly glide up and down. So I'm using the wall for support to go flexion. Extending your elbow and as you go down, you go back to your hips. So pretending there's a wall in front of us so you can see the motion separating. You use the wall, you glide through, up, keeping that resistance on the band. So you're gonna feel it on your shoulder and down. And do that as well 10 times and hold that position when you reach up to 10 seconds. Hold, you can start five seconds if you like for beginners and progress to 30 seconds hold until you get stronger for the isometrics of your shoulder. I'm hoping you learn a lot on how to cope with shoulder impingement syndrome. And if you love this video, you want to learn more about Pilates, yoga, and physical therapy, health, and wellness, please subscribe to my channel, ring the bell, so you won't, you won't miss anything, like, and share this video. Every little like you give to my channel, you are supporting me. If you have any questions, suggestions, questions, leave a comment down below, or direct message me on my social media, and I'll try my best to answer each one of you. I'll be relaunching my back master class for those who needed an extra hand and help. If you're having back pain, neck pain, shoulder pain and anything in between to help improve your lifestyle your core strength and posture click the link down below and be part of my early bird wait list always remember be safe be well and healthy see you in my next video training bye